Good evening and welcome to not only the 25th annual John W. Harris Teacher of the Year Award, but it's also 2013 and we are honored to have this room full of such wonderful guests. An old Chinese proverb states, better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. And we are here tonight to honor great teaching. This room is filled with great teachers, teachers who endlessly give from the bottom of their hearts to help each student succeed, be those that are challenged with learning, to those who thirst and want more each day, to those who have baggage in their backpack heavier than many of us could carry, and each of these teachers each day serve them with compassion and care and every bit of effort in their body to see that each child succeeds. In this room tonight, we have 34 nominees who drew the attention of a, by a student, a parent, a colleague, a volunteer who thought that their work that they do each day was very worthy of being recognized. And they were nominated to represent the best of the best in our school district and in our community. In this room tonight, we also have former Teacher of the Years, 24, who in the past have been honored and recognized for the endless of tradition of giving from the bottom of their hearts to see that each child succeeds. We are so thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate with each of you, with your family and with your friends and with your colleagues, so that we can lift up what we do best each day as we care for the children in this community. And of course, no celebration is complete without fine entertainment. And I'd like us to give them a round of applause now and one again later after they finish with Washington High School's Aka Fellas. Please continue enjoying this fabulous dessert. And as we begin the rest of the program, I'd like to take just a few minutes to thank some of the very important people who helped behind the scenes in getting this wonderful evening put together. First of all, thank you to the Sioux Falls Education Association. They were greeting and smiling you as you came and presented uh, the nominees and finalists with the corsages and boutonnieres. So we thank you for your partnership for these uh, 25 years. We also, I'd like to thank uh, Ben Schumacher and Jeff Little. Um, ben is one of the people standing in the back behind the camera. And not only did Jeff and Ben put in a lot of time preparing the videos that we're about to see regarding the nominees and a look to the past of the last 24. Um, they also will be uh, taking time to edit and provide tonight's uh, reception that will play on KLEARN in the next uh, few weeks and month ahead. I would also like to sincerely thank one person who with very short notice um, took over the overall organization of this event for me, and that would be Deanne Conrad, who's standing over here, and she deserves a round of applause. As we were sitting enjoying our dessert together, Bruce Eide mentioned the uh, table decorations, and Deanne made those for each table and also had the vision and the creativity to, to develop the logo. So um, it's just top notch, Deanna, and we thank you for that. And finally, 
We wouldn't be here tonight to celebrate nominees and finalists if we didn't have a team of very dedicated, hardworking judges. And they spent many, many hours reading and rereading 34 nominations, which is just wonderful to have that many of our fine teachers lifted up to celebrate the profession. And so those who are here tonight and not here, I'd like to introduce to you. And the first judge on my list is Ginger Pele. And Ginger is right up here front. Ginger, would you stand up? Ginger. Ginger is our Sioux Falls PTA citywide leader. We also have in our presence Sergeant Catherine Daniels. And Catherine is one of our school resource office supervisors, and she's with the Sioux Falls Police Department. Catherine? <laughs> and unable to attend tonight is Kate Foley, and she's with the Small Business and Leadership Development part or department of our Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. As well as unable to attend tonight is Keith Portner. He's from Metabank and he's a parent of at Pettigrew Elementary. And then the judging team each year is rounded out with a school board member and each year they all argue over who gets to serve because everyone wants to do it. And of course we only have one each year participate and this year's member was Todd Tolke. Todd, would you like to stand? And tonight, Todd is joined by his fellow board members, Vice President Julie Westra, <laughs> Board Member Kent Elberty, <laughs> and Board Member Kate Parker. <laughs> and our school board president, Doug Morrison, was very sad and he sends his regrets that he's unable to be here tonight. But believe it or not, school board members have full-time jobs. And uh, his job called him away out of state tonight. And there's nothing in his power he could do to change that. And so he is very sad about that. But we said we would know he'd be here in spirit and, and be with us. So again, I welcome you. I celebrate those who helped make tonight a special night with all of the volunteers from those behind the scenes and our judges. And at this time, we're going to get on with what we're here for. And I'd bring to the front Vice President Julie Westra. Thank you, Dr. Holman. Good evening. The Teacher of the Year program has allowed us to celebrate a tradition of education excellence in the Sioux Falls School District. It has allowed us a chance to reflect on talented teachers who deserve to be recognized for their selfless dedication and unwavering commitment to help a child find joy in a good book, to unlock the mysteries of science, or to feel pride in their achievements, no matter how big or small. Let's take a look back in the past quarter of a century at some former Teacher of the Year winners. For 25 years, the Sioux Falls School District has been honoring the best teachers in the city. Teachers whose hard work, dedication, and devotion to students earned them the title Teacher of the Year. Several of these winners have gone on to become South Dakota Teachers of the Year. Over those 25 years, many aspects of the celebration have changed, including the addition of a dedication, honoring a man who spent nearly 25 years dedicated to students as superintendent in Sioux Falls, Dr. John W. Harris. One thing has not changed over those two and a half decades, that entire time, Vern ID Motorcars has been right there, generously recognizing the best of the best, and even more importantly, helping us celebrate the profession of teaching by recognizing and rewarding excellence in this noble enterprise. Let's meet a few of these incredible teachers as we take a look back in time. I suppose the kids would say once in a while I'm a little off the wall, uh, but um, I use, try to use a lot of variety in my classroom, a lot of different things going on. 
Uh, everybody learns in a little bit different way, so I try to use uh, as much variety as I can along with you know, the standard procedures that we've all learned in biology and so forth with the microscope work and so forth. But I think variety is probably a thing. And humor, you have to have a little humor going along with it. I really love working with kids. Um, I knew when I started college that that's what I wanted to do and I just worked for that and I haven't regretted it. My number one goal is for them to believe in themselves, believe they can do it. That's, that is so important, I think, for fifth graders, well, for all children, I guess. If they believe in themselves, anything's going to be possible. You have to be enthusiastic. You have to like what you're doing. If you don't, uh, the kids pick up on that in a hurry. In fact, last week I had a, a girl ask me in my anatomy class, she said, how can you be so enthusiastic all the time? I said, you know, I love what I'm doing. And I've used the example, some people go, uh, go fishing for fun, I teach. I enjoy every day that I get up, that I come to school, because it's, a, it's, it's kind of a new experience. I think the youngsters, uh, they think you're special, they think, uh, uh, you know, you, you don't have a life outside of the school, and uh, you're there for them, and I, I believe I am. They, they brighten my day every day with, like I say, with a hug or a smile or a high five or, or, or comment, a little story they tell me, and it just makes my day. I think we really need to teach children to respect and care for one another, to um, think about each person as a, as a human being and uh, to respect um, our world so that it's a, a better and safer place um, for the next generation. The thing that our students need more than a, a book education is a an education on relationships and, and uh, how to develop relationships and, and knowing that they're trusted by someone and knowing that I uh, not only trust them but, but uh, they can trust me. And I think, um, I think the relationship building that I really work hard at with my students really pays off, not, not only in, in a personal way with my kids but also academically. I think with the relationships I develop, they're uh, much more eager and willing to um, go the distance for me if I show them I'm willing to go the distance for them. I care deeply about the kids and they know it, but I'm not their best friend. I'm their teacher and so there has to be that difference, that attitude of respect. And then I think I have to live my life in a way, and I would advise a teacher to, in a way that is worthy of the respect that you want to have for your kids and for the parents. You need to be who you say you are. Try to come up with new strategies. Um, if someone isn't getting something, I change my approach. Um, we know that with 23 students, you have 23 different learning styles or the way they see things. And so it's just a challenge and it's fun to come up with something that makes sense for each one of those so that they can come away with the knowledge they need to get out of second grade. Just the thought that I'm, that I'm hopefully able to have a positive impact on you know, 170 students every single day of the school year. Uh, you know, I hope that uh, in my actions and the things that I say and the example that I, that I live, I hope that uh, they learn more than just biology, the study of life. I hope they learn a little bit about life. As teachers, we're learners along these, alongside them and we're really trying to create an environment which stimulates that learning. They just don't come and run around and play games and <clears throat> those kinds of things, but it's really important to look at the ordinary moments those children have and to make them extraordinary. That is always the beauty of teaching is that I remember Susan Greeno said, you know, every year I learn and I don't do it the same way every year, you know, uh, because I want to be engaged. And then, you know, our school is really good about on-service training and, and so now we're talking about how do you individuate for kids that, you know, one particular book isn't right for every kid. It's a matter of joy of learning and I think the kids um, um, love science because it is that discovery every single day and I want them to succeed so I make it fun for them and we do a lot of hands-on activities. Sometimes you just need to look at things in a lighter way. Um, so when they come into my room they know that it's, it, it's a lot of material and it's not an easy class, any of my classes, 
but they do have fun and I think they see my passion for what I teach and and that I thoroughly love what I'm doing and that's what I try to teach them you know it doesn't matter what you become but you have to love what you're doing or it's a job. My main philosophy of teaching has been to believe in every child that they can do it and I think that that philosophy has been what has motivated me to want to be a better teacher to motivate my students to want to learn and to be the best that they can be. I think sometimes we hear this a lot that teachers believe that all students can learn but I, I really do think that math is attainable for all students and what we just need to realize as teachers is that maybe it's not at the same time, maybe it's not at the same pace or maybe it's not in the same way that we might have learned or that is kind of a common, common practice but um, Every day it's fun because the challenge is different. Every day it's something new. Um, they're excited to learn. Um, you know, I always tell the kids that they're my family, um, not only just this year, but forever. And what I want them to learn when they leave here is that they're worth something, they're unique, and I want them to be, to know that it's okay to be different and then, you know, to set goals, to um, set high expectations, work hard, and that they can be whatever they want to be. You know, don't let things or people stand in your way. The students keep me teaching. Uh, I love the students. I love the schedule. I love seeing students learn. I love seeing them accomplish things and coming back and tell me how it has made a difference in their life. So the teaching, I've, been, I've stayed in teaching simply because I enjoy the students. I also enjoy the people I work with. They are affirmative, they're collaborative, they bring the best out of me. And how can you not enjoy when somebody wants the best for you? Well, how lucky are we to have all those teachers? That's awesome. In recognition of our 25th anniversary, Kent Al Alberti will join me to read the names of each year's winner and ask the teacher to stand when their name is called. Please hold your applause until all the names have been announced. Sure. 1989, Joan Connor, Lincoln <laughs> High School. 1990, Sharon Schuler, Roosevelt High School. 1991, Lois Sudbeck, Little Flower Elementary. 1992, Julie Ashworth, Hawthorne Elementary. 1993, Phyllis Kruger, Harvey Dunn Elementary. 1994, Judy Davis, Patrick Henry Middle School. 1995, Don Decker, Lincoln High School. 1996, Don Riefenberger, Cleveland Elementary. 1997, Alice Siliasen, Eugene Field Elementary. 1998, Bob Dolan, Washington High School. 1999, Audrey Lofgren, Robert Frost Elementary. 2000, Linda Carmody, Eugene Field Elementary. 2001, Jeff Lukens, Roosevelt High School. 2002, Sally Rice, Edison Middle School. 2003, Roxy Albrecht, Robert Frost Elementary. 2004, Brent Eliason, Washington High School. 2005, Barbara Dowling, Hawthorne Elementary. 2006, Karen Venus, Patrick Henry Middle School. 2007, Sharon Andrews, Challenge Center. 2008, Barbara Myers, Axtell Park Middle School. 2009, Char May, Terry Redland Elementary. 2010, Teresa Timmerman, Lincoln High School. 2011, Nicole Gardner-Fink, Harvey Dunn Elementary. 2012, Donna 
Leininger Washington High School. Please stand again as a group while we show our thanks. All right, and now let's meet this year's 34 nominees. Nominations and letters of support were submitted by colleagues, parents, principals, and students. Their words clearly show why you have been nominated. Nominees, as I read your names, please come up and receive a certificate recognizing your service and accomplishments. Again, we ask you to hold your applause until all names have been announced. Mary Arsham, Horace Mann Elementary. Karen Otten, Washington High School. Craig Boyens, Edison Middle School. Jennifer Chamberlain, Horace Mann Elementary. Rhonda Corbin, Jefferson Elementary. Betsy Cronin, Jefferson Elementary. <clears throat> Nicole Davis, Washington High School. Karen De La Montagna, John Harris Elementary. Gady Young, Edison Middle School. Dan Fisher, Lowell, Lowell MST Elementary. And I do know that stands for Math, Science, and Technology. <laughs> Beth Graham, Oscar Howe Elementary. Cindy Hayden, Harvey Dunn Elementary. Terry Hogarth, John Harris Elementary. Vicki Kearney, Discovery Elementary. Steve Kennedy, Ann Sullivan Elementary. Dean Marty, Challenge Center at Garfield. Janice McEntee, St. Mary Elementary. Stacy Nelson, CTE Academy. Heidi Noam, All City Elementary. Kari Papke, Washington High School. Sabrina Rogay, Christ the King Elementary. Jamie Rockvam, Longfellow Elementary. Andrea Saylor, Oscar Howe Elementary. Julie Thomas, Oscar Howe Elementary. Robert Vangsness, Terry Redlin Elementary. And Lynette Wagner, Rosa Parks Elementary. Lynn Risty, Lynn Risty from the community campus, Chelsea Schott of Patrick Henry Middle School, and Stephen Fisher of Axtell Park Middle School were unable to be with us tonight. Please recognize these teachers again for their outstanding service. At this time, board member Kate Parker will introduce our five finalists. Just a little bit. So you can see my face a little bit. 
Thanks, Kent. Each of the five great teachers who are finalists is passionate about their profession. Let's take a few minutes to learn more about, that, about what inspired them to choose this noble profession. Why is she so thirsty? Why is she lethargic? She's pregnant, right. So you might want to look up um, specific pregnant diabetes. There's a special word for that, if you happen to know it. Okay, so that's some research that you'll want to do. And she doesn't necessarily have a disease because she's pregnant, that's a normal thing. But having diabetes when you're pregnant, how do you say that, you think? Gestational diabetes, right. My name is Allison Hutchinson and I teach biomedical science at the CTE Academy in Sioux Falls. So every day when I'm trying to plan the learning experience, what I mostly think about is how can I help my kids enjoy their time with me as much as I enjoy my time with them. Um, you saw today that it's always active and um, every day is different. I like that aspect. I really like um, that in high school biology at least, we're not discovering anything new necessarily, uh, but my kids are constantly rediscovering um, what's already been found out and for them the first time it's really exciting to have a kid go oh um, those are kind of the the moments that I live for. I've tried to become more of a tour guide. Um, life is really exciting and all that students need is someone to point out all the exciting places. One of my favorite quotes is that the best teachers are uh, masters of the obvious, that they see what's going on and they point it out to students and once the student sees that their life is never the same. Well, we just went to the Eastern Dakota Science Fair and we had seven projects. Um, we had one team that uh, did a really great job and actually gets to compete again in Minneapolis and so um, just like a proud parent almost when I listen to them talk about the science that they've done and how they've designed their experiments and the statistical analysis that they've done um, to validate their data. Um, it, my heart gets really big. It makes me really happy to see everything that they can accomplish. We're going to uh, now sum, calculate all those dominant alleles and all those recessive alleles. You remember how we did that uh, earlier when we were working through our genetics problems? Every homozygous dominant individual has two dominant alleles. Heterozygous has one allele. My name is Steve Ortmeier. I teach at Lincoln High School and I teach AP Biology and Biology. I think the, the biggest thing about teaching is relationships that you develop with the students. It's, uh, if that part of it wasn't happening, I probably wouldn't be teaching. Because science is fun, but it's the, you know, those light bulb moments you see in the kids that make me keep coming back for it. Some of the biggest challenges in being a biology teacher and an AP biology teacher is keeping up on all the science. Because any textbook is, as of right now, outdated. And so it is a constant struggle to stay up on the latest events. So there's a lot of time spent looking through electronic journals, staying up on it. The job I do when I'm not teaching, I'm a research assistant out at Sanford Research. And one of the main reasons for me in that part of my life is, is staying current. You know, the new technologies that are coming out and the new uh, discoveries that are being made. One of the themes um, in my teaching style is, of, of course, caffeine. I mean, that's important in the mornings. I try not to take a lot very seriously. And, you know, I, my colleagues are great in putting up with that. And I, I certainly don't take myself too seriously. If I wasn't um, enjoying and laughing and passing on uh, wisdoms and knowledge and experiences and being a role model, I, it wouldn't be a job for me. One, two, three, last two bars, go! Ba, 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 blah! Right? Does it say to vomit through your horn on the last note? Hey, it's sort of serious, because that's what I heard. Ba, 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 blah! Right? Ba, 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 ba. Finish.
strong strength, not vomit bad. Strength, you know, good, yeah? I'm Jason Rigg. I teach band here at Axel Park Middle School. I also teach band at Hawthorne Elementary and Hayward Elementary. And there's jazz band here too. My heart is, I guess, here with these middle school kids, um, getting them to, to get started and fired up and heading into high school now. I, I never thought that I would have found um, the joy that I get from it, but it, it fulfills me more than anything ever has, honestly. My dad and my mom and my stepdad are all now retired music teachers, and so I kinda, that was the last thing I wanted to do, actually, and then I took uh, a French horn lesson at a summer music camp, and it, I just, I fell in love with it. And I don't know how else to explain it other than, I, I was kinda decent at music, you know, like a tall kid can, you know, shoot baskets or something. I was okay, and music was in my head, but when I left that camp, it was in my heart, and I didn't want to do anything else. Part of it is, you know, knowing that this kid maybe came from a weird situation, and maybe they couldn't afford an instrument, and we were able to get them one, and they went from honestly not knowing which end of the horn to blow in to being a part of a band that sounds, you know, pretty good. And I think, I think that can do a lot to, you know, uplift a kid and, and let them know that there's, there's stuff out there for them, no matter where they come from. It's the hardest thing and the, it's the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. There are some great teachers in this district and it's, it's an honor to be with them and, and to teach with them and to go to battle every day and just and do what we do and hope that every day makes a, makes a difference in at least one kid's life. Take away two positives. Now, before you even tell me what the answer is, because I know you guys know what this is, okay? <laughs> Think about for a second, if you're taking away positive, are we getting bigger or smaller? smaller. We're getting smaller. Which way are we going on the number line? We're going that, yeah, we're going left. We're going in the negative direction. We're going in the negative direction. My name is Jill Vetris, and I teach at the Middle School Immersion Center. I have three classes of immersion math, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And then I teach two classes of ELL math, and that would be on the Axtell side of Axtell Park. It's just, it's fun to see them light up when they learn, and they're just so excited about the learning process, and they just, they just want to know. So it's, it's all about the kids. I feel like I'm learning every day with the kids and the language is a definite barrier but we work through it and um, I think trying to figure out what they know and making sure that what I'm giving them is new material and I'm just helping them with the English part of math of stuff that they already know and okay well this is what it means here. Um, I just, I don't want to be giving them something that they already know and that they're bored math-wise. I guess the biggest thing for me has been seeing the growth of the kids, especially the ones that have, that came in my first year um, and hardly knew any English or didn't know any English and to see them come back and start up a conversation with me, it's just like, oh, it's, it's amazing. It's really makes you want to come back every day. I just hope that all the kids I see know that that I care about them and that they, they know that there is one person in their life that will always have their back no matter now or 10 years down the road or at, at any time that they always have someone that believes in them and knows that they are going to be someone, someone special. Nice job. How many vowels do we have? My name is Sarah Weeblehouse. I teach kindergarten at Longfellow. I love teaching kindergartners. I love to teach them how to read, how to write. For most of them, it's their first experience with school and they're still excited about school. And um, that's really my favorite, is teaching them being their first experience. So seeing them learn to read is my favorite. A lot of kids come in at different ranges. Some kids have not had any experience and so we start right at the beginning with letters and sounds and some kids are already reading and so we have a wide range of students to reach and that's challenging but it's good for me because then I'm learning too to meet their needs. We differentiate a lot. Um, some of the things we've been doing with our Daily Five is they have books in their buckets that are at their level. Um, I was just trying to get a kiddo that uh, needed to pick a challenging bucket for himself so uh, he wasn't going to get bored with it. I love seeing them read their first book and they look at me and they have this huge grin on their face and I'm like, I know, you just did it, that's awesome. 
um, or when they're reading on their own and they come up to me like, Mrs. Wewells, Mrs. Wewells, I, I figured this word out all by myself, I sounded it out. You know, those are the things that are exciting because they're taking what we've taught and using it on their own and they're excited about it and it pushes them to, to work harder. And I truly believe that it does not matter what their background is, where they've come from, they can all learn and I, I push hard and you know, I have high expectations for my students. Every single one of my students, I expect them to do uh, great things, and they do. They always come through, always meet my expectations. Todd, you had a tough job. I know. And all of our judges, a very tough job this year. Um, finalists, as I read your name, please come forward to receive your certificate. Each of you will also receive a voucher for $100 to use as you wish in your classroom. Allison Hutchinson, Project Lead the Way, Biomed Sciences at the Career Tech Academy. Jason Rigg, band instructor at Axtell Park Middle School. Steve Ortmeyer, biology and AP biology at Lincoln High School. Jill Vetris, Middle School Immersion Center at Axtell Park. And Sarah Weebelhaus, Kindergarten Teacher at Longfellow Elementary. Congratulations once again to all of our nominees and finalists. More than $70,000 has been awarded to outstanding teachers since the Teacher of the Year Award began in 1989. That would, have been, that would not have been possible without the firm belief and commitment of Bruce Eide, owner of Vern Eide Motorcars. Bruce understands the value of the great teachers we are honoring tonight. Our ongoing relationship with Bruce and Vern Eide embodies the spirit of the school business partnership. And now, Bruce and Dr. Pam Holman will come forward in preparation of naming our winner. Bruce, there's something that's not on the program tonight. Um, it is 25 years of this man's commitment to our profession and what he's done. And so what we'd like to do is, Bruce, award you with a special plaque tonight in celebration of 25 years of commitment to our profession. I don't know that we have anyone else who stood with us hand in hand for 25 years. So, Bruce, on behalf of the entire school district, this says, better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher with deep appreciation to our friend Bruce Eide for 25 years of supporting great teachers. Thanks, Brian. That's very nice. Thanks, Pam, and thanks, school system. Uh, that's great. I just wanted to get an A, but maybe this is better. <laughs> this is great. Um, you know, uh, um, we talk about in the business communities nowadays a thing called workforce development. 
and I just happen to believe that workforce development starts like in preschool. So what teachers do is, um, you know, we charge you, we the public charge you with training up our future and thanks. Sure appreciate it. It's nice. At this time, we would invite um, Todd Tolke to come forward as he will make the announcement for the Teacher of the Year. Thank you, Dr. Holman. Thank you, Bruce, for all that you've done. We really appreciate it. It's a little nerve-wracking. I hope my grammar's good, being in front of this many <laughs> teachers. This year, I had the privilege of serving on the judging panel for Teacher of the Year Award. Before meeting as a group to select this year's winner, each of the five judges had the opportunity to review the nominations individually. We came together, when we came together, our final task was to narrow down the front runners from this field of 34 deserving and wonderful nominees and ultimately chose the winner. This was no easy task. Outstanding, mentor, role model, humble, patient, kind, loving, respectful. Those were words to you, that were used to describe this year's winner, who according to one nominator, believes this teacher operates a classroom that supports students as they conquer challenging curriculum. And it offers a powerful sense of belonging. This teacher is loaded with common sense. Positive, engaging, creative, reflective. The gold standard by which teachers should be measured. This year's winner displays evidence of putting student achievement first, is committed to collaboration with colleagues, and seeks to improve each and every day. On behalf of Vernity and the Sioux Falls School District, I am very proud to present this year's 2013 John W. Harris Teacher of the Year, Allison Hutchinson. <laughs> Allison, <laughs> you've done quite a good job here. Thank you. This is the largest ensemble of nominees uh, in the history of the Teacher of the Year Award. And, um, you know, we lift up all the teachers in the Sioux Falls school system. And, uh, uh, well, you follow, as you know, in a, in a great pantheon of educators. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, we, um, the plaque and the affirmation is a big deal, and um, um, so we make a big deal here for you, too. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I have to say something. Um, so I don't know how you picked. Um, it's a really great honor to be, like Bruce said, standing in front of such um, a wide range of true professionals. And um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that the very first time I knew that I could be a biology teacher was in Gay DeYoung's science class when I saw her dance around the room with a frog. 
Um, and I knew that I could be a teacher when I was with Barb Boongraves for a month and she made astronomy exciting. <laughs> and I knew that I could be a teacher when I sat in Jeff Lukin's class and he honestly, um, as a new teacher, just let me sit and take notes. And I would just say exactly what he said the next day and I was telling <laughs> stories about my eight-year-old daughter Grace and I, um, <laughs> He let me practice being a teacher, and um, for you and for many others, I am forever indebted to my family. I come from a long line of teachers, and I'm really proud to represent you right now. Don't look at me, though, because I'll cry. Um, <laughs> um, I'll be honest with you, my plan from the beginning was to nominate Stacy Nelson, who really is the best teacher in our program. Um, she inspires me every day to um, really challenge myself to make sure that students are our main focus. Um, and so I first wanted to nominate her because she is a great teacher. And then second, I thought if she won, then she could talk about the CTE Academy and biomedical science. <laughs> and um, just like most days in class, uh, my plan didn't work out exactly like I thought, but um, I'm going to meet my objective anyway. So um, I'm not really good at the wrap up. You can look back at all my evaluations, but I usually get dinged on closure. <laughs> Lesson lacks closure. Um, and so I'm going to wrap it up here. I've been practicing. No, I've been practicing, OK? So you may have heard this one, but I have a dream that one day the Sioux Falls School District, or the city of Sioux Falls, excuse me, would know the difference between the CT Academy and New Tech High. <laughs> and, uh, and I have a dream that one day more than one student will take AP Bio and AP Chem um, AP Bio for Mr. Artmeyer and AP Chem and AP Stats and all four biomedical science classes. I hope that we can develop some synergy between those classes. And um, I have a dream that one day uh, when universities are looking for great students that they'll think about the biomedical science program at CTE and they'll know that our kids are coming out with great skills and great knowledge for the workplace. And when uh, the people in peer are wondering how are we going to fill all these STEM jobs, um, I hope that they I have a dream one day that they'll think of the CT Academy and um, they'll know where to invest their time and money um, in education in general. Um, and I have a dream that one day our three kids will attend CTE. Um, it has changed my life and it will change theirs too. And um, I have a dream that they'll work with their hearts and with their minds and with their hands to make good products and to provide good services uh, for the marketplace and that they could contribute positively to my social security account. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you very much for this award. I'm really honored to represent all of you here in this room. Um, it is quite an honor. Um, I know that I am blessed to work with so many true professionals in the Project Lead the Way network across the nation and in our state. Um, so many true professionals in the Sioux Falls School District and so many true professionals at the CT Academy. So thank you for this nomination and uh, for this award. It is overwhelming. Thank you. Congratulations to each one of you in this room, and congratulations to Allison. It is truly our hope that each one of the teachers in this room, as a nominee, a finalist, a past teacher of the year, or a colleague here supporting one of those, really knows and understands and feels the gratitude we have in our hearts for what you do each day to serve our children and prepare our children for the future that faces us. We sincerely thank you for your commitment and your passion and your care. Thank you for spending this evening with us and as Bruce said, that we might lift up each teacher and celebrate their success. Thank you. When Dr. Homan and Todd Tolke first came in and brought, uh, brought a little bouquet of candy and a little award, Todd asked the same thing, like, you're a finalist, congratulations, how does that feel? And I said, I've developed a twitch. <laughs> 
And that moment has kind of been replaying in my head, like, you don't have anything better to say? Then I've developed a twitch, which is true. I've got a little twitchy eyebrow um, on eyelid going on, too. Um, but it feels, you know, really good to be recognized. It's a little bit strange uh, because... I would prefer to just have my own little quiet life in my own little quiet classroom. And I, I, what I want to use this recognition for is just to show the great things that my students are doing and learning in class and all of the great things. Um, my email box is full of congratulatory remarks, which I'm really excited about. Um, a few of them have come from former students, and I think that those maybe mean the most to me. Actually, in the last three days, I've run into two moms, and I just read one other email of, former students that I had at Roosevelt and AP Bio just saying really nice things and teachers especially um, don't really get to see the fruits of their labor very much and so if anything that's um, what I'm most grateful about with this award is that um, people are kind of coming back and it's great to see where students have kind of launched from class. So Biomedical Science is a series of four classes put out by a, a company called Project Lead the Way and they're a national curriculum and in these four classes, the students first start out in principles of biomedical science, learning about how cells um, work and general disease. Uh, we talk about diabetes, sickle cell disease, infectious diseases. But what the kids don't know is that we're really studying genetics, we're studying protein synthesis, we're studying hormones and um, osmosis and cell processes. And so they use a disease focus to kind of engage the students. In human body systems in this course that we're teaching now, uh, the focus again is on health and human disease as it relates to each system. So again, we focus on what's going wrong in each system so that we can treat and diagnose them as the healthcare professional uh, would. And then uh, medical interventions, the third class, none of it takes place in the human body. It's all, as the name implies, medical interventions that um, science has developed to either diagnose, treat, or prevent diseases. So a huge focus again on infectious disease, um, a lot on genetic disorders, and then um, a ton on cancer. And then finally the fourth class, uh, the reason why I don't sleep at night, is med or, uh, biomedical innovations and, and that's meant to be a capstone course. And so these students have been with me now for four blocks of class, um, two years, and they're ready to design their own research project and carry it out and present it. For example, we went to the science fair. Um, they're doing a research internship at Sanford. They have job shadows at Avera and Sanford Hospital. Um, we're doing an entrepreneur camp where they're going to sell a medical device um, and then do their HOSA competitive events too. So a really open-ended class. It's been exciting to see the students step up and um, really showcase everything that they've learned here and also at their home high schools. Actually, I never wanted to be a teacher. I was really vocal about that in high school and halfway through college. Um, I come from a long line of teachers, and I knew that um, it was a lot of work. And the honest truth is that I just thought I was way too smart to be a teacher. And since then, I have realized two things. Um, of course, that I am not as smart as I think I am, um, the obvious one. And then it just confirmed uh, that teaching really is the hardest thing that I could do. So I love school and I love being a student and I love learning and taking notes is like one of my favorite things to do and I, I enjoy that part but then when I try to think about how to make that make sense to 30 other little minds in the room who are engaged at various levels um, to what we're talking about uh, that is the hardest thing that I could do with my time and like I mentioned before when someone does make a connection and they kind of their face lights up or they physically say oh um, then that's when I know that I've accomplished my goal and that makes me feel really good so um, I never wanted to be a teacher but I know now that teaching is not necessarily just what I do but it's who I am and so whether I'm in school or at home or wherever I, I find myself thinking about how can I help another person make sense of this or how can I help another person make these connections that I um, have made or am in the process of making too. Um, so I don't know why I ever thought I could really deny my birthright. Like I said, a, a long line of teachers, my mom being one of them, lots of cousins and aunts as teachers too. Um, so I, um, I never wanted to be a teacher, but I'm really glad that I am one. One thing that I really like about moving to the CTE Academy is that community and business connection focus that we have. 
Um, we are required and encouraged to make connections with the community. We have an advisory board of university and uh, business entrepreneurs who kind of look out for our program and help us when we need it. Um, I have kind of perfected the art of cold calls and cold emails, just saying, hi, my name is Allison Hutchinson, and this is what I do, and I was wondering if this would be a possibility. Um, and that's not part of my natural bent, um, but I will do it if it means that uh, my kids can benefit from it. And so we have amazing community partners. I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, Jill Weimer at the Sanford Research Center. She has helped us out tremendously um, finding job shadows for my kids and allowing us to come there now for four weeks and, and develop some tools for her and her lab. Um, so she helps us out a ton. Both the job shadow coordinators at the hospitals have been really generous as well. And then just all the field trip places that we go. I mean, Augustana College invited us uh, for their science day. Sanford has a discovery day. We've been to the Avera Prairie Center. That was a beautiful tour, just connecting the science of cancer with the emotional and physical and um, spiritual side of cancer as well. That was a, a beautiful field trip. Um, we've also uh, reached out to Hematech and we've toured there now too. Um, and then we just recently went to SDSU's Cadaver Lab. And so every um, university or lab or business that we've ever tried to contact has been very generous with their time and we know that they're busy people and so um, as uncomfortable as it is for me to make cold calls and emails uh, we've benefited generously um, from everyone's willingness to help us out. We take our spot at the beginning of the biomedical pipeline in South Dakota very seriously and so we want everybody to know that we're raising up great kids to work in labs and um, produce good products for South Dakota. One of my best friends in college was Erica DeYoung and I knew that her mom was a middle school science teacher at Edison and um, I just I really wanted to be in a classroom to just see what it was like and um, Gay was nice enough to let me come in and I would play Scrabble with some of her kids in the afternoon and then kind of watch her teach as well. And I remember very distinctly one moment they were dissecting frogs and she just had such a presence in the front of the, the classroom and she was dancing around the room with this pre-dissected frog and I thought, you know, the kids are just so happy right now. I think I could do this. Like, seeing them happy makes me so happy. Um, I had an internship over January um, at um, Patrick Henry with Barb Boone Graves and just seeing her as well, the professionalism that she treated the, the middle school students with, maintaining their dignity was a really good learning lesson for me and then also I distinctly remember that was the first time I had ever experienced team time and so the idea of focusing teachers attention specifically on students was a really good experience for me to have as well. And then um, I student taught at Roosevelt under Jeff Lukens, and then that next, I student taught in the fall. In the spring, there were two teachers that had babies back to back, so I had two long-term subs right away. And then that next year, there were three openings in our department. So I knew if I didn't get one, I just needed to find a new career because nobody has that kind of opportunity. It was amazing. And so um, watching Jeff and just seeing, again, his storytelling ability and, and the way that he communicates to students very, um, very um, straightforward is that I am for you. I think you can do this. And the students definitely rise up to that level that he sets for them. So um, those three teachers specifically have had a great influence on me. I've been a part of Roosevelt Science Collaboration and just the camaraderie and the family atmosphere there has been great. One thing that I really appreciate about CTE um, is that it's kind of the opposite of collaboration. You're not necessarily on your own, but each person is an expert in their own way. And all of the industry experience that each of the instructors brings um, always now keeps my mind focused on the next step. So high school isn't the end for most of our kids. Most of our kids will go on to some post-secondary training, and then even after that, um, what I really like about teaching out here is that I have more connections in the community with either universities or businesses um, health systems, whatever, and and it just makes me want to work harder for my students because I'm kind of able to help them bridge the gap between what's happening in high school and then their next steps. So with my uh, 14 biomedical innovations kids who are in that last class, 
Um, nobody has talked about senioritis at all. I've made it a bad word, but there's just so many new things, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing that I think they're just going to get to um, the last day of school and be like, oh, it's over. And then, um, you know, they'll be ready to jump into that next phase of their life.